All right, welcome back to Decrypted Tech. Today we're going to be taking a look at Cooler Master's Sidon 120M. This is their 120 millimeter water cool all-in-one water cooling device. Um, we'll take a look at the box here first. As you can see on the front, they've made a big deal out of showing you the cooling head. This is because this is not one of those systems that is actually a takeoff of an Acetec design where they're buying product parts from Acetec. It's actually Cooler Master's own design. They, we do believe they have purchased some parts from other manufacturers, but for the most part, this is their design. We saw some of the original prototypes back at CES in 2011. So we know this is something they've been working on for a while. They finally released it out to the market, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at it and tell you what, how it works today. Uh, the silver on the box is for Cooler Master's 20th anniversary. So we've got that mixed into this, and as you can see, you have a good indication of what it's going to look like on the front, and you can also see the aluminum radiator in the background here. This does support almost all of the sockets that Intel has as well as AMD including the FM1 to the 2011 all the way back to 775 for Intel all the way back to AM2 for AMD. All right, looking at the side you have a listing of specifications here including the radiator material it's going to be aluminum as we mentioned fan dimension fan flow all of that as well as pump life um, it's rated voltage everything you're gonna see that along the side here the back is interesting in that they decided not to show this in play inside of a system and give you a bunch of pictures of what it'll look like when you get it inside there to sort of enhance the impression that this is their own design and it's a, you know unique to Cooler Master. They've given you a technical drawing and something of a listing of specifications. Of course, you have a pure uh, copper water block, not unusual in water cooling systems, so that's not a big deal. Uh, micro channel technology is also sort of standard here. One of the things we do want to highlight, and we'll show you this in a minute, is the fact that the cooling head is only 27 millimeters high. This is the thinnest one that we've seen on the market. There are others that come close. Cool it has one that's pretty similar, but still, this is the thinnest cooling head that we've seen. The radiator, unfortunately, is also 27 millimeters, so we'll have to take a look and see exactly how that's going to factor in. You have a smaller cooling head, smaller radiator. Is this going to be able to handle those temperatures from something like, let's say, a 3960 once we get it in the system and we start overclocking it? All right, flipping the box around one more time. You get a picture of the cooling head, and again, like we said, it's unique design. It's different from the ones that we've seen, although it is still round. You have different mount points here that are going to factor into the actual mounting hardware that Cooler Master has included inside here. All right, so now we've taken a look at the outside of the box. Let's go ahead and get it open and show you what's inside. All right, now that we've got the box open, we'll take a look, and you have a 120 millimeter four pin. Uh, PWM fan here. This is capable of running at between 600 and 2400 RPMs. So that's going to give you plenty of either, um, it's going to give you either the, the cooling that you need or going to give you the quiet that you need, depending on what you're looking at. You plug this into the board, you can set it inside uh, your BIOS on most boards now, so you can set up that duty for it. You have a bag that has all of your mounting hardware. We are going to go through this and actually show you how this mounts on an X79 motherboard. So quite a bit there. Of course you have your manual and if any of you have ever worked with any of these manuals you know that they are uh, very fun to read. And the last thing we have inside here is of course the actual water cooler itself. This is everything, it's all in one. You have your two Teflon hoses, you have your radiator here, which again this is an aluminum radiator, and then of course you have your very thin cooling head. So let's get this box out of the way. We're going to go ahead and take a look a little bit more at the cooler itself. Again, we talked about this 27 millimeter thick radiator. This is going to give you a very thin radiator, although you still have the same uh, fin area as you would in a standard radiator. You just don't have as many fins. Your tubes are going to be thinner. This could become a factor in cooling as we get this into a system. You do have mounting points for fans on both sides, so you can run this in a push-pull configuration, which could give you more airflow through here and actually give you a little bit better cooling if you need it. You do have um, and it looks like an evacuation point here but you're not supposed to touch this or take it off I'm not sure why they left it there but it says don't damage it don't remove it don't poke it with a screwdriver All right looking at the cooling head again as we mentioned it is very thin on at four points you have these screw holes this is going to be for your mounting brackets it's the mounting arm sort of like what we see on Cooler Master's air coolers you can put different mounting brackets on here to make it stable it's not your typical uh, mount and lock style that we see with Corsair, Intel, or some of the other uh, big names out there where you actually have to lock that mount on there like we saw with Thermaltake's uh, Water 2.0 Pro and their Performer. These are also movable as we mentioned they're the Teflon tubing you see this on Coolit um, 
You also see this on Corsair, Intel used the Teflon tubing. From what we understand that the Teflon tubing is going to give you a little bit lower evaporation point. You're not going to have a chance of evaporating the liquid that's inside there as much as you would with your traditional uh, rubber tubing. And then of course you have a three pin header that's going to plug in. Whatever header you do plug this in, go into your BIOS and turn off any kind of power management on it so you get the, full, the pump moving at full speed. Right, we're going to do a quick flip and take a look here at the top. You can actually see where the pump is mounted inside there. And then of course on the bottom you can see the thermal interface material. Now, just to, we're going to talk a little bit about thermal interface material here because this is a common problem not just with Cooler Master but with coolers in general. The stuff that you get here is not as good as what you can buy off the shelf from either Arctic Silver or a number of other companies. We wish that included in some of these kits would be a little bit higher end thermal interface material or at least the option to buy it with it. The same thing with aluminum radiators. Um, although this is a nice kit and we like it, if this small radiator was copper instead of aluminum, it could actually be this thin and still get much higher cool, much better cooling. All right, we're back and we got the head lined up here. Now, one thing we're going to point out is you'll notice that they've got channels along the sides here. That's actually meant for these to slide into. So this will fit directly into there. You'll see it'll kind of lock in, and then you take your screw and you thread it up through there. Do the same to the other side. Now you will have to remove the plastic cover when you do this. So you want to be extra careful that you don't mess up the thermal interface material if you choose to use that and you don't clean it off and put something else on there. We are going to leave that on because during our testing that's what we're actually going to use. All right, so now we'll go ahead and get the bottom piece in place. So we'll go ahead and get this lined up and in place. Sorry about that, my hand's in the way. The second one doesn't want to go in as easily. All right, so those are in place. And now we'll go ahead and get our motherboard over here and we'll get this mounted. All right, we've got the motherboard in, in place here and we'll go ahead. You're going to want to take these and you want to screw them in at each of the four endpoints. That's going to give you enough distance for this to screw in properly. So we'll go ahead and get this in place over here. And then we'll drop the last one in. Get those down nice and tight. All right. And then, of course, depending upon where your cooler is going to be, is going to determine how you want to mount this. Since we're going to put this on a flat test bench, it doesn't really matter for us. Um, for you, if you're going to mount this in the back, you'll probably want to mount it. Let me go ahead and zoom out here. You'll probably want to mount this this way, that'll give you the best um, curve in this. Or you can also mount it the other way if you want to bend these tubes over. You can mount it this way and that'll go ahead and get this in the back. But like I said, for us it doesn't really matter, so we're going to go ahead and just mount this on here. Since this is going to sit off to the side on a test bench. So you drop this down. And of course you will need to actually move these to move the individual pieces. You, what you want to do is you want to push them up and then they slide over. So we need to move these out to their far end. And then you have enough room to go ahead and get this mounted on the board.
From there, all you want to do is wrap this around, find your CPU uh, fan header, get it plugged in, and you're all set. Pretty simple. It's not a very difficult thing to install, but the most complicated part is to get everything lined up for the mounting arms here. And that covers the Cydeon uh, 120M from Cooler Master. Be sure to click on the link below that actually has our full written review including the performance numbers that we know you're going to be interested in. This $55 kit is available now. You can get it at almost any online uh, e-tailer. And as always, if you like this video, be sure to click on the like button. Make sure you share it with your friends and subscribe to us so you can stay up to date with the news and reviews we have for you.